Good morning all and uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, today is the 4th of April, 2023, when uh, we host our Inuka Enterprise uh, Program uh, series of webinars that we do every month. And today we revisit the issue of credit scores, why it matters for uh, borrowers, why it matters for anyone, even including those in the policy space, why we need to discuss issues to do with credit scores. Uh, of course, we all agree that the subject of digital lending has become noble, uh, is growing in the country, and even conventional lending now is equally growing because credit now, as we speak, uh, is over three. If you look at the total credit in the banking sector is over 3.2 uh, trillion shillings. And, and, and of course, that's uh, something that is of great importance to the banking sector uh, because that's the uh, one of the critical asset classes within the banking sector. And therefore the channels through which credit is channeled out to the private sector remain very critical in informing the next steps in the credit market. And I think going forward, what we foresee is a reduction in the need for us to look at the collateral, but instead now strongly have a greater weight on credit scores in informing uh, credit underwriting in the banking sector. So it's an opportunity to host you today for uh, the next one hour or so. We should be uh, able to make a discussion around the credit scores and why it matters. And to take us through this, we are privileged to have Mr. Gideon Kip Kipiakwai, who is actually the CEO of Metropole CRB. So before I invite him to take us through the presentation, uh, maybe just to give you a brief about Mr. Gideon. Uh, he's worked in the CRB uh, space for about eight years now, but he has over 18 years experience in business information, banking, public service, and ICT sectors. He's a professional member of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, and an Institute of Certified Secretaries. And uh, besides that, he holds an MBA uh, from the Management University uh, of Africa, an MSc from UH University in uh, the USA, and a Bachelor of Science degree uh, from Maseno University, and several other advanced leadership and management certifications from the Schiedler College of Business in the US. He's currently a PhD candidate in leadership and management at the Management University of Africa. And we are honored to have him today as our speaker. So we'll go straight into inviting him uh, to make his presentation. Uh, but maybe just announcements of our housekeeping is that the webinar is recorded and the recording would be accessible soon after the webinar uh, today. But in terms of Q&A session, so we'll take the first half an hour or so to go through the presentation. Then we have about 15 minutes of question and answer session. Uh, uh, and at that point, we'll invite questions through the chat box so that we are able to read them out and we'll be able to make responses to the questions raised. So allow me now to invite uh, Gideon to take us through his presentation. Uh, as I wish us all, all the best as we deliberate on this critical subject of credit scores. So you're welcome, Gideon. Thank you, um, Dr. Tiriango. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, may I first start by thanking the Kenya Bankers Association for giving us a chance to interact with the members. This is the banks and the microfinance banks and their customers under this Inuka Enterprise series. We truly appreciate the chance to share knowledge and expertise on this area of credit scores. And really the broader uh, discussion around 
enabling growth of the credit market. And the credit market has the two sides of the players, the supply side and the demand side, the lenders or the credit providers and the borrowers. So we are very happy today to share some um, high level um, information about credit scores and why going forward, it is the number that every business and every individual needs to know on top of their fingertips. In other markets, people know their credit scores more than they know their ID numbers or any other important number in their lives, say even birthdays. So it's a very important item. Um, let me start by saying that the, the reason we have credit scores is because of credit risk. And in all businesses, including um, including lending institutions, the biggest risk the business faces is credit risk. And it comes from the possibility that borrowers whom you have given money, or in the case of credit providers, that the counterparties you have given goods or services or credit will not pay you on time or will not pay you at all. So you need to determine credit worthiness of the parties you are engaging in. And that assessment is credit risk assessment. So, and this is the space that we are talking about credit scoring. So we are trying to assess credit risk. So um, in, the, in the area of credit um, scores, we are bringing out the issue of predicting future default. The likelihood that a borrower whom you have given money will not pay you back on time or will not pay you at all. And to do that, the information that has the capacity in a market to do that is CRBs. One, because they have the behavior, the past performance of the borrower. And from past performance, you can predict the future. From your behavior or from the behavior of a borrower in the past, when they took a facility, you can tell what will be their behavior going forward. The next reason why CRBs are very important is because they have data from very diverse backgrounds of people in, with, diff, with different attributes, which they can cluster and profile. So that you can, you can be able to tell the future of a particular borrower, looking at how people like them or businesses like theirs have been performing because they operate under similar risk factors. And so the next question is, how did we get here as a country? to the point where we are now able to talk about um, credit scores. So I want to pick, um, give you a um, synopsis, the history of the CRB. So discussions on legislations uh, or establishment of CRB started a long time, uh, around 2004. In other markets, CRBs have started recently. Other markets, the CRB space have been there for 100 years. Globally, um, Countries that have a CRB regime, uh, about 122. So it's not only Kenya that we have CRBs. Um, so the discussion starts in 2004. In 2008, we have the, bus, the, the, the first CRB regulation in place, but that regulation introduced the sharing of negative information only by banking, uh, bank regulated institutions. So banks and MFPs. So it was very limited because then we were talking about blacklisting. The banks were giving information to CRBs of those people who are not paying their loans, the people who are in default. Uh, out of that uh, legislation that CRBs started uh, being licensed, Metropol got licensed, which licensed in 2011. So we are now um, 13 years in that space. So um, operating under a negative information only does not really uh, enable 
CRBs to generate scores because you only have one side of the story. The people are defaulting. You don't have the full picture of the people are paying back, how they are paying. So you are not able to build credit histories. And therefore you are not able to have the character assessment of the borrowers. Um, uh, out of that uh, limitation, uh, there was jostling from all parties and we got the first amendment to the CRB regulation in 2013. This enabled full file sharing, which means the entire um, credit contract information wasn't shared, whether you are paying or not paying. So this in essence was the end of blacklisting. So we move from uh, blacklisting to building of credit histories in that regulation of 2013. The other item that came in out of that amendment was introduction of credit information providers. These are third party players other than institutions regulated by central bank. So this is SACO, uh, trade credit providers, insurance, all kinds of institutions who provide either goods or services or credit or you are lending. If you are not regulated by central bank, you, you came to Metropole, we processed your application, got, got CBK to approve you to participate in the credit information sharing mechanism. So from 2013, we are able to see the performance of a borrower, not just in the bank, but also outside the bank. That is when they took a circle loan, are they pay? When they went to, when it's a business and they, they took uh, goods on credit from a distributor or from a supplier, did they pay back? So we are able to start extracting and understanding their behavior. Now, fast forward to 2018. Central Bank introduces the concept of use of scoring through a banking sector charter. This was in response to repeal of the interest rate caps. So central bank directs its um, uh, regulatory institutions to, to start using scores and to start working on risk-based pricing. We know that that, is, that's been a, that has been a process and uh, it's in 2022 that we started seeing approvals of the first batch of risk-based pricing models. Banks in 2023 have now started implementing risk-based pricing. Now we have another regulation in 2020 that mainstreamed the use of score by clearly indicating that banks in their lending processes need to use or to um, uh, refer to CRBs and use CRB scores in lending. So at least this gives you a history of how we have come. Now, as part of uh, addressing the, the negative past of CRBs, which I said ended in 2013, we know that the elections of 2022 had a lot of um, narratives around CRBs denying people credit. The president on his um, accept, uh, Vict, uh, what is it, inauguration speech indicated that we are shifting to a new CRB model where CRBs will not be used for blacklisting, but institutions will use CRB scores and ratings to assess grant credit and also to price. And that is why there's relevance today and in this meeting to discuss why credit scores. Is because there is a shift in the market and a shift at the, both the lenders and CRBs and even for consumers to start considering how important the credit scores are. So how do we arrive at scoring? I have pointed out that credit information providers now share full file credit transactions of their customers and their borrowers. That information comes to the CRB database. It goes through scoring. 
and then we generate scores and ratings. These scores and ratings are then accessed by the lenders and credit providers. So this credit scoring is now using the data we are receiving, running statistical uh, models, functions, to transform the data into a numerical measure that can be used to guide credit decisions. So that is, in essence, what scoring is. In the Metropole uh, CRB database, we have scores for over 700,000 businesses. And we have scores for over 19 million individuals. These are people who have, at one point or another, gone to a bank, gone to a digital lender, they have gone to an MFI or a SACO, and, and taken a loan or took goods on credit. And that information shared to the Bureau. So once that information was shared, we are able to then develop a score for that individual or a business. Yeah. So in the Bureau, we have data. It goes through scoring. And then now we can allocate borrowers into good borrowers, bad borrowers in a spectrum of a score. So you will ask what is a good borrower and what is a bad borrower? So in terms of good and bad, we will look at it in terms of risk buckets. But in terms of computing the scores, let me highlight just the eight categories that are important in determining the credit score. The biggest and the most important one is the payment behavior. When you are given a loan or when you take goods on credit, which you are supposed to pay back, how do you pay back? Do you delay or you pay on time? That's what I'm calling payment behavior. That is a, takes about 45% of the weight of the score. And so it is very important for borrowers. And I know here we have SME, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, managers of uh, businesses, the most important thing that you can do to a score is to pay on time. That boosts your score, it improves your credit score with a weight of 45%. The next one is total debt, credit capacity. Are you borrowing what you can afford to pay back? Length of credit, are you doing short term or uh, short, short loans or long loans? Um, you are appetite for new credit. And then we have other factors, uh, personal characteristics, stability factors, credit mix, all those then go into computing your credit score. So is it possible to predict future performance of a loan, of a borrower using a score? And the answer is yes. So the uh, Metro score or our credit score ranges from 200 to 900. 200 being the defaulter or the uh, poor quality uh, credit quality to 900, which is highest credit quality with a probability of default of 0 0.000001, very negligible um, uh, a probability of default and the 201 having a 0 0.88 probability of default. So probability is between zero and one. So in between. So our, pro our <coughs> predictive, the predictive power of Metro score is uh, 0 0.88 under a 95% confidence interval. Um, the results, when we go back to the database, and say, for instance, for businesses, when we gave a score, what was the percentage of loans that were eventually not being serviced in a year, greater than 180 days, you can see about 40%. All the way to business scores of about 90, having on time greater than 90%. If we go to um, the standard prudential guidelines, when we ran scores one year ago, 
and see how the loans are performing today. You see, for loans that are in normal, most of them were having scores of above 700. And for um, loans that are under loss, you see, most of them, three of them, were having scores of zero to 400. So the score um, in line with the, uh, the provincial guidelines, we are able to translate and, and the banks are able to uh, in, in advance predict how the loan will be if they look at the score today. Um, if you look at score distributions, the, the blue circle shows the area under the curve or the frequency of the total IDs where they sit with respect to the score. And then the orange line shows the delinquency status, the default status. You see, as you move from 200, which has a default of about 54%, all the way to 900, which is almost zero. Now in the Metropole database, um, again, looking at uh, that previous table, I think to simplify it, you have two tables there, individual credit scores and business credit scores. We have talked about the interpretation in terms of the risk buckets. To say 200 to 400 is poor credit quality, 400 to 500, fair credit quality, 500 to 600, satisfactory, 600 to 700, moderate, 700 to 800, good, 800 to 900, excellent. This is for an individual. For businesses, the score ranges from 20 to 90, 20 to 40 poor, 40 to 50 fair, 50 to 60 satisfactory, 60 to 70 moderate, 70 to 80 good, 80 to 90 excellent. Now, the distribution in the database is, and which is similar to what I had shared in the previous slide, this one, is that about 14.32% of borrowers have a poor credit quality. So their score ranges from 200 to 400. Most of Kenyan borrowers have their scores ranging above 600%. 600, uh, credit score is 600. For businesses, most of them, most of our businesses have credit scores above 60. That is 38.9. Uh, three in 60 to 70, 53.94, 70 to 80, and 0 0.69 uh, above 80. This is what lenders see. So the lenders will see your score as 655. And this score can be accessed directly as a credit score. Or when we give a credit report to a lender, they can see your credit score and they can tell your credit quality. So if your score is 655, you can see it is in the second band there of between 600 and 700, which is good. For a business, that score would be 65, which would be between 60 and 70. Now, implication number one, and this is the reason we are here today. Based on the score ranges and based on lenders' risk appetite, lenders are setting thresholds or cutoffs of people they are lending to or businesses they are lending to. So a bank A, for instance, can, can set its cutoff point at 400 and say above 400, you can ask with a credit score of above 400 for individual or above 40 for business, we'll review your application. Below that, your risk is too high, we do not want, because the rate of default there is say um, 40%. A more risk averse bank, bank B, i say, no, nope, we are taking a higher cutoff 
our cutoff will be 550. So as an individual or as a business, if your score is below, you have now an effect in terms of access to credit. So the credit score is becoming an important factor in determining access. And therefore it's an important item that you need to know. We have looked at the data to see access rates. We have seen for scores below, uh, between 200 and 400, people who applied for loans in this category, only 10% were successful. Between 400 and 600, only 50% were successful. Between 600 and 800, 70% were given facilities. Above 800, which is an excellent score, people who had people and businesses who have who had scores of above 800 when they applied for facilities got it. For lenders, in terms of translation, when they gave loans. to people of below 400 scores, they have 40% defaults. 400 to 600, 19% defaults. 600 to 800, 8% defaults. 800 to 900, 2% defaults. So this is very important as we demonstrate that your score is very important in your acceptance by a lender. The next important implication of the credit score is on the terms of loans. When you go to the bank, most banks use the five C's to determine or to assess your facility. So think about it. The bank will consider your loan application based on many factors. And all of it trying to answer two questions, your ability to pay, to repay back that loan, to repay back in full and on time, and your willingness once you have been given. So the first, uh, first uh, line there, you see 200, 400, 600, 900 is credit scores for individuals. The next there is odds, odds ratio, one to one, two to one. So if you give um, uh, a loan to one person, how many will default? So you, um, you get one, if you give one, you get one defaulting all the way to, if you give 50, less than one default. So for loans that have credit scores between um, 200 and 400, you find that from a terms perspective, there's a very high chance that la that loan will be rejected. Number two, even if the loan is, is approved, they will request for very strict collateral. Most of the time goes to the point of even cash back. That's bank guarantees. You need to have fixed deposit before the bank can give you because they want to be very sure. Because without securing their interest in that very high level, by giving you the money, by leaving the door, they will easily count it as lost. Because this, this is a group that have very high defaults. Now we are talking about risk-based premium. If we go to global best practice, interest rates for group of individuals who are given facilities and they have scores of 200 to 400, they are charged 10% above base rates. So it's very expensive to have a score of between 200 and 400. For customers who have scores between 400 and 600, the cost ratio is two to one, the credit quality because it's subprime, the banks will require collateral. Lenders will require collateral. You know, do you have a logbook? Do you have a title deed? Can we have a hold on your debentures, ETC? Here again, the interest rates, and we have already started seeing happening in the market, because this category, we already see lending to them. The interest rates is plus approximately 5% over and above the base rate. So it is um, expensive to have a score that is not good, is not above good. Now for customers between 600 and 800, these are prime customers. Uh, collateral requirements are mostly relaxed. 
So you get a lot of unsecured facilities. Interest rates tend to be base rates. Base rates here is with respect to the bank. So, you know, banks have, uh, are in business of lending. So in terms of the base rate, it is the cost of capital, you know, addressing the time value of money. They put in the administrative cost and some margin for the arrive at their base rate. Now with that base rate, customer of between 600 and 800 is most likely going to be given that base rate. Now customers of excellent scores above 800, there is no need for collateral because here the risk of default is almost nil. To encourage these customers to borrow from the, from those banks because as a bank, you want to attract and you want to retain these very high quality customers. To do that, what do lenders do? They give them preferential rates. And these rates could be up to minus 2% of the base rates. So it's important to point out that the second implication that the credit score have on you as a business is on this issue of your terms of the loan and mostly on the question of your interest rate. Now, so what do you what do you do as a business or as an individual to ensure that your score improves? So I want to share about four items which you can influence directly or indirectly. Number one is submission of your full file. Are you borrowing from a circle? Are you borrowing from an MFI? You need to ensure that they are sharing your full information. Here, positive data is very important. We had a meeting with a, a team from IFC the other day, and they said that in the US, for instance, during COVID, a lot of businesses, a lot of individuals, worked very hard to ensure that the utility data was shared. So instead of uh, their credit scores suffering because of delays, in repayment of their loan because their businesses were affected by COVID. In the US, there was an increase, an improvement of credit scores, mostly from availability of additional information that was not there because borrowers went out of their way to ensure that they influence parties that are holding their utility and other payment information to be submitted to the so you, if you are a member of a circle, is that circle submitting full file? Or well, they are just uh, delaying in sharing your data. So you need to push that yourself because that immediately improves, especially for circles that you are very sure you're doing very well and you're paying on time. That immediately improves your score because it is an important data set for computing your credit score. Increase borrowing. Access higher credit limits improves your scores. Number three is credit repair. Are you having a facility which you are not servicing and you're servicing another? Are you having challenges paying your facilities on time? What you need to do is work out a way where you can have facilities that you can afford to pay. So you go and restructure your loan facility, either by consolidation, or extending repayment periods so that you are compliant with the payment terms. Fourthly is on your own credit profile. Do you know what is in your credit report? Are there errors? Is there a loan you cleared, but is still being reported as um, a loan in arrears? Is there somebody's, um, uh, is there a, a, a facility that does not relate to you that sits in your profile. These are issues that you can do to improve accuracy of your own profile. So you need to access your credit report and ensure that the information that is there is correct about your own facilities. If they are not correct, there are mechanisms. And I've seen there, there's a team from CIS Kenya here, there's a tour center, there are mechanisms 
to quickly uh, address any issues that are in your report or in your credit profile that are not correct or that do not relate to your account. And you need to start tracking changes in your credit score because if you see your credit score starting to decline, you need to address it immediately because now it is going to have great impact on your financial performance on your success in terms of accessing credit and costs. Yeah, so with those few remarks, I want to um, ask everyone here today to get to know your credit score. Right now, you can pick your Safaricom or Airtel line and dial star 433 hash. Um, you will be, if it, is, uh, if it is your first time to interact with Metropole, you will need to register with about 100, shill with 100 shillings and you will get your free credit report. If you're already registered, you can just dial star 433 and access your credit score. See what your credit score is and see, understand which risk bucket you are in. You may also download our Crystal Ball app on, uh, on App Store or visit the Crystal Ball website, which is on Metropole websites um, with the URL, uh, HTTPS, crystalball.metropole.co.k. You could also call us on that number and somebody will be able to guide you and give you your credit score. Lastly, you can visit any of our agents countrywide uh, or uh, in any Huduma centers to know what is your credit score, um, to be supported in terms of understanding how to improve your score or any other issue. So with those, um, I hope I haven't taken most of the time. So thank you very much. Um, back to you, Dr. Tiriongo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gideon, for a very insightful uh, presentation. Of course, uh, highlighting to us the importance of credit scores in terms of access to credit, as well as also the terms of the same credit that actually vary and change according to your credit score. You have also mentioned about what needs to be done, why businesses should mind about their and individuals as well should mind about their credit scores, what they need to do should there be a problem with the credit score because it is such important in ensuring access to, to credit uh, from the banking sector. So while you made your presentation, I think a few comments and questions have come through. Uh, thanks to Stanley Nyangeri and uh, Cynthia McKenna for your comments. And I think Stanley is asking, how do site verification reports help review businesses with otherwise lower scoring for consideration for facilities? And you also add, and do you actually offer, I mean, like to the C, do the CRBs offer the same? That is the site verification reports. Would you want to take that, uh, Gideon? Yes, yes. Uh, um, and Stanley, um, thank you for that question. Uh, businesses um, have to be validated. So if you go for a facility, the lenders want to know whether the business actually exists. So it's sort of like know your customer. So uh, site verification is a product we offer under the business information reports product suite. And we enable lenders to know whether particular business exists. We come and verify their existence. We also try to answer many other questions with respect to the business. So we can ask, we, we also do um, um, validate whether you have uh, customers, who are they, whether you have suppliers, who are they? Do you pay your suppliers on time? So that then the, in the five C's that I talked about, the lenders have confidence. On the, on the individual side, we give lenders what we call identity verification, which is almost similar on the counter side for business. So we also validate to say the customer who is applying for a facility, is this their true identity? The reason for this, boils back to credit risk. 
Banks want to manage the risk. And the biggest driver of that risk is information and symmetry. If information that is not accurate and banks have a risk that whatever they're handling may not be true. So they need to get a third party to authenticate that information. So that information, once it's authenticated, then gives confidence to the lenders in terms of the credit risk. And we know that first time loss comes from identity theft or non existent business. So if somebody steals your idea and borrows, there's no way that person will repay that loan. If a business says that they exist and they're doing business and they actually don't exist, if a bank makes a mistake and lends to that business, then it will not get back their money. And that is why these issues of KYC, uh, including site verification, are very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I think there's a comment by Cynthia McKenna, and I think it speaks to the practice that is currently growing uh, amongst many, many lenders. She's saying that, frankly speaking, I think nowadays loans are given according to your relationship to the credit managers. Uh, so could you speak about the role of credit scores uh, in credit information led credit scores? in line with other factors that actually have a role in the credit underwriting process. So she's talking about relationship building with credit managers as becoming one of the key issues influencing credit supply. Thank you. Um, Cynthia, I think, I don't know whether for you is that a bad thing or a good thing that credit is being given according to relationship with credit managers. I think in the traditional sense, the only credit history that existed was limited to that contact where you're borrowing. But with the existence of, of, uh, of uh, CRBs, your relationship with credit managers is now available for everybody to see. And your relationship with credit manager is your payment, is the payment of your loan. You only have good, you, have, you only have good relationship with credit managers if you are repaying your loan. And that we can see now in the bureau. So I think uh, I like the way you have said, frankly speaking, I think nowadays loans are given according to your relationship with credit managers. I think that's a very important fact. And that has now been translated into a credit score. Because that credit score is showing your relationship with your credit managers in quotes, in the sense that when you took a facility and you you told your credit manager, I can pay, I'll be paying on fifth, you paid on time, and you paid as per your terms. But if I, if I assume you meant that the discrimination, that even with a good credit score, you will not get a loan because a credit manager doesn't know you, I think that is. Uh, that is not correct because the incentive, credit managers generally are assessed based on the performance of the loans they gave out. There's no credit manager who would deny a loan to a customer who is good or who has potential to repay. They have no incentive to give to their uh, friends who are bad, bad borrowers because it will jeopardize even their own performance and their jobs. So yeah, so it is important for us to see that that relationship with credit managers right now is digitized, has been automated through the credit information sharing. And it's not just with one credit manager, all the credit managers you have had a relationship with when you took a facility. That information now sits somewhere for everybody else to, to see. Thank you. Okay. There's a comment by Ted uh, first. Uh, Stephen Gidinji, you're asking about what, are you saying what more about NR rating? I guess you mean, is it the, the, the nil return or you mean the not rated uh, uh, categories of borrowers? Yeah, so what happens if you have never borrowed? So usually you're given a neutral score. A neutral score is one that is neither good nor bad. So you, and that is why part of building your credit score is about borrowing. Because that's the only way you move 
from 400 to 600 to 700. Lenders ask themselves, how come this borrower has never borrowed? So that is, the, that is why not having access credit in a credit market is not necessarily a good thing. A lot of people uh, always thought that, you know, me, I don't borrow. I don't want to borrow. But by saying that, you have really limited your purchasing power, your access to potential to get into uh, expanding or leveraging what you have. So you eventually have to start somewhere. And when you start, you have to make sure that you are, you are repaying and paying on time. Yes, thank you, thank you. I think that emphasizes, of course, the ability to demonstrate your credit worthness, how you have handled previous loans is really an indication of how you are likely to handle any forthcoming uh, loans. So it's always good to have some information. Uh, and, and of course, it's not, it's not like you're saying you must have a loan uh, for you to be rated fairly or unfairly. Uh, but ideally, it speaks to the whole principle. For lack of information, you are then there would be missing information in terms of uh, what can be used to rate your credit worthness. Then Ted Cheke says, can a business access a client's CRB rating? So you mean maybe a business not in the banking or lending uh, space, can they access a client's CRB rating or scores? Yes, yes. Uh, let me answer that. And that is really the strength of Metropole. Metropole controls the largest market share in this market because most of our partners are businesses from across all sectors. We have about eight industries, businesses in eight industries plugged into the CRB. How do you as a business access your clients or your, your customers' CRB um, scores? All what you need to do is contact us. We'll give you what we call a CIP form. You fill. We get approval from Central Bank to allow you to share information with the CRB at the same time access your credit customers' information. So it is a reciprocal arrangement. But before you do this, you have to demonstrate that you are doing credit transactions. So, so Ted, please um, get in touch. We will be able to uh, process you being a credit provider to be able to access clients, CRB scores and ratings before you can do business with them. And I urge every business here that does credit sales or that is in lending, please don't lend in the dark anymore. Don't do transactions where you, you have a very high risk because there is information asymmetry. You are cropping in the dark. You need to see this customer or this retailer, how they are doing with the other creditors, with the other um, credit providers. So it's important that you, you apply and uh, we will process and give you access to be able to share that information, which helps you also to expose that customer's credit behavior to everybody else. So by exposing, then you are enabling them to access more credit. So if it's your customers, they can access even more credit to buy from you more. But also in case they are defaulting, it will have implications for them. So they will quickly come back and settle your, your debts because by not settling, they are, they are likely to be affected when they go to other lenders. So please stand, get in touch and anybody here, we process you to get access, to be able to see your customer's CRB status going forward. Thank you, thank you. Elizabeth Irongo, uh, you bring out uh, another critical aspect. You say that can BAP data rebuild their credit scores to a moderate or better score? And what's the process of determining this? Maybe you could just re-emphasize, uh, Gideon, yes, how to improve um, one's credit score. Our scores are computed on the fly. What I mean is they are computed every time it is required. So we don't have a credit score packed somewhere. What it means is if you, if you have repaid your loan today, that repayment goes into the algorithm that generates the score. So yes, what you do every day 
either rebuilds or destroys your credit score. And I pointed out that by borrowing and repaying on time and, and uh, handling that payment behavior properly, you are actually um, improving your score. We have demonstrated and we have to demonstrate to CBK the sensitivity of the score engine. So we have looked at customers and seen how long it takes to rebuild the score. And it takes as fast as the variables come in, as fast as the data that improves the positive variables come in. So if you have, if you have four facilities and they were in areas and you start paying them, quickly you still start seeing changes of your score um, improving. So true Elizabeth, you can actually influence your credit score, both upwards or downwards by how you, you pay your facilities. Okay, thank you. Emily Koigi, you bring out something from your own experience. You say, what happens when the report has errors? I had an instance where I went to a bank and they informed me that my credit score is good, but I had failed to make certain payments, repayments. Yet it was not true. What happens? How does one follow up? So you have a chance again to speak about the dispute resolution. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you very much, Emily. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, and it's part of what I pointed out why you need to continuously uh, look at your credit report. Uh, and the reason is because uh, there is potential for errors coming in from uh, lenders. So lenders could have uh, probably not updated or done something uh, from their end that leads to an er erroneous data coming into the bureau. Let me clarify here that the bureau does not generate any data. We only receive data from lenders, from credit providers. And we have SLAs where we have instructions and uh, working arrangements with the lenders and credit providers to make sure that they double check accuracy of the information they're providing. But yes, there are a few instances where it is possible for a lender to report an erroneous information. When that happens, there is existing uh, mechanisms to lodge that dispute, including timelines. Um, when, you, when you notice that your, your credit report has an error, please immediately file. When we get the notification from you, we will contact the, the information provider, the credit institution that sent us that data. There is a timeline, they must act on your, on your complaint within uh, seven days failure to which we will remove that record. So assuming we, we send the bank to say that uh, Emily, Emily does not have a loan with you of this amount, kindly um, uh, remove that record. And they say, um, yes, uh, we are sorry that was not Emily's record, we just removed. If they say that Emily took a loan and we have the facility letter, then we now direct Emily to resolve it to the bank and we have also Tatua Center which will then be able to look at how that loan was onboarded. Is it, uh, was it uh, a transaction that was a forgery or ETC? And then it is resolved. Eventually we will be given instructions out of the decision of Tatua Center or if the parties are not in agreement, it goes to court and we'll get instructions to either remove or uh, retain the data. So there, is, there are mechanisms to resolve erroneous data that, is, uh, that has come to the Bureau. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And finally, there is a, the last question. Is a Hustler fund included in the credit score? Uh, thank you for that. Um, the Hustler fund data is not yet with the Bureau, but we have, uh, the, it's not yet being shared with the CRB, but they are working on modalities of sharing that data. Once the, once the data is shared with the CRB, the score engines will pick it and it will be used, it will be part of the computation of the credit score. So eventually I can uh, say that eventually how you are performing on the Hustler fund and any other affirmative funds like uh, Uezo, uh, Youth Fund, Women Enterprise, ETC, 
will affect your credit score. And it's important for people, even within those kinds of funds, to repay and ensure that they have a good payment uh, performance there as well. Okay, thank you. So eventually, every information is critical. Eventually, we need to be, at the end of it all, we need to be, to take care of our credits whenever we are uh, engaging as businesses, uh, because you never know. Every information is critical to inform your future access to, to credit. I see two questions that have come in pretty fast. We can accommodate them. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, maybe we can end with this. Kulimba, you say that what's your take on circles which only use pay slips to mitigate credit risk? That is, teachers circle and fail and fail to reference completely, yet the members might be defaulters somewhere else. Um, thank you, Kulimba. I think I have a question back to you first. Do these circles have uh, defaulters? Do these circles have uh, non performing loans? I know you know the answer, and therefore, these circles ought to mitigate credit risk by checking the status of their borrowers from CRBs. The, the model of cooperatives, though, is, uh, is interesting because the owner of the business, who is the member of the circle, is also the customer. And a lot of times you find is also the director of the in the management, and is the same person who has given the funds that are being lent in terms of the savings. And when somebody is borrowing, they are probably borrowing their own savings. So there is there are issues around what really is non-performing loans. What is the credit risk there if somebody is taking their their savings? plus two other member savings that are properly, all of them are already money that sits there. So Kulimba, you understand that we have had cases where circles stretch. So instead of um, giving uh, two times or three times, they give four times. And so then they expose themselves to potential credit risk. There are cases that where there is a lot of debt stacking to the point where in case of a small um, happening on the member, for instance, they lose their job, that member does not have anything to be recovered because they're continuously um, heavily indebted. So all those things require that that information of the credit character the character of the borrower be assessed and their ability to repay be assessed and you can do that through the bureau mechanism. So it's important that even circles really use the CRB because credit risk still exists in the environment. Mm -hmm. Then um, finally, yeah. sorry, you had something to say? Um, yes, I wanted to go uh, quickly to Sarah because I'm seeing time is not on our side. Yeah, yeah. Answer, um, uh, uh, Sarah Pinky Posgay's um, question, is there a possibility of having a standard report from the three CRBs? Because currently each CRB provide, a provider gives different scores. Now, the CRB uh, reports and scores are the source of comparative advantage to the CRBs. And the score is not just a score for the sake of it. Score is, as I pointed out, is a prediction of the future. Prediction of the future performance of that borrower with respect to a loan. That is where um, CRBs um, offer, offer value to their clients. And the CRB, which has the highest predictive uh, score, is the one that is preferred by the market. The CRB that has a, the a report that has the most information, report that is highly informative, is the one that is used in the market. So it is an area that 
Um, it's like uh, going to a restaurant and saying that we standardize all the pizzas to taste the, the same, or we standardize all vehicles to be the same. I think um, we should not have a case like that. We should have, uh, and we do have scores that are better than at others. As Metropole, the reason we have 80% market share is because our reports, our scores are preferred by the lenders and are preferred by decision makers because we have the largest information in that report and we have used the largest data sets to derive the credit scores. So we have looked at the almost 360 degrees of a borrower before saying that this borrower is a good borrower or a bad borrower. So it's important that that is clear that really don't worry if your credit score is different from one bureau to another. What you, what you should ensure you have is that the, your, your report and your, your, your score reflects who you are as a, as a borrower. And that reflection comes from a bureau that has more information about you and has the best scoring engine. I've show, I showed you that our predictive part was only 87. Only 87. That is why it's Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Gideon, for a very insightful presentation and discussion, the issues coming out. I think we have been enlightened on the subject of credit scores, why they are important, why, need, why we need to mind about them. And then, and of course, uh, the critical buildup in terms of the information pieces that then uh, build up to our credit scores. So it's been a pleasure to host you all uh, in, this, in this discussion. And uh, we look forward to our next discussion uh, next month again, when we will announce the topic of our coverage in the webinars and the Inuka program. And uh, we feel so much, so much pleasure to host you today. So thank you very much. We've come to the end of our session today, just to recognize my colleague, Rosalyn uh, Gino, who has been uh, an organizer of this event, uh, who is also in the call. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you all. Thank you and uh, have a nice rest of day. Yeah, before we leave also, um, Dr. Adriogo may I also um, thank KBA and thank all the attendees for the questions and for the active participation. We truly value the questions and value your uh, business and support. Uh, KBA, we truly appreciate your continued support in the market. Look forward to future engagements. I have seen a lot of activity on the credit score side. I'm seeing a lot of the members here have queried the credit score. So I hope you are able to tell your score already. Thank you very much. Thank you and uh, have a good day.